Well, I'd like to welcome you back to What's Up With Prophecy today. We've been studying God's salvation plan, and I have outlined it in four stages. Now, stage one was before man was created, and stage two is what we're starting into. This is what I call the, the uh, teaching plan, and then stage three will follow on, and it will consist of reviewing the records. And then finally, stage four is what I call the final exam. So I've broken this study up into these four different stages. So we're going through this in a real detailed manner. So we're building to a, a culmination here in a few videos. And today, as I said, we will be covering the teaching plan. Well, what is the teaching plan? We will be looking at this, and I will be showing you that a blood sacrifice was required for the forgiveness of sin. Now, the blood sacrifice that was required, I'm going to show you today that it continued over the years all the way from the Garden of Eden. So Adam and Eve started out in the Garden of Eden, and they broke God's uh, law, or God's re requirement not to eat of the tree of good and evil. So when Adam and Eve broke that uh, commandment of God, they sinned. So we're going to start off with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Then we're going to continue with Cain and Abel, that was where, uh, Adam and Eve's children, and then we're going to follow on with Noah's uh, and the ark and his family after the flood. And then we'll look at Abraham. He's the father of the Jewish, Jewish nation. And we'll see that he also continued with uh, an altar and the sacrifices. And then we're going to look at the tabernacle in the desert where God's requirements were reestablished after the Jews came out of uh, Egypt, where they were uh, slaves. And then we'll look quickly at Herod's temple, and that was the last temple that was built for the, by the Jewish nation, or for the Jewish nation. And then finally, we'll briefly look at Jesus' sacrifice for the sins of the world in this video. And then finally, we'll look at the destruction of Herod's temple in AD 70. So we'll be going through all of these today in this little study, and we'll be building up to a future video where all these things, you'll see how they come together. Now, Adam and Eve were, in the, were created by God, and they were placed in the Garden of Eden. So we read in Genesis 2, verses 8 and 9, and it says, The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, where he placed the man he had formed. Now, in that Garden of Eden, there were two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and good and e of evil. So two trees were in that garden, and God made special restrictions on the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we read about this in Genesis 2, verses 16 and 17. And it says here that the Lord God commanded him, You may eat freely of every tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so this was pretty clear for Adam and Eve, the restrictions that they had. And God also said, In the day that you eat of the, that tree that he told them not to eat of, he says, you will surely die. So the consequences of eating from that tree were clearly uh, given to Adam and Eve by God. So, uh, so, like I said in Genesis 2, God said that in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. And we read in Romans 6.23 in the New Testament, it says, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So this, the original restriction God gave Adam and Eve on the tree of life, 
he said it would be, you would die if you ate from it, from the tree of good and evil. And we see here, this is also listed or in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is also death. So the tree of good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom, what did she do? She took the fruit and ate it. Now, we're not going to go into a lot of detail into this story right now, but the point is that she ate from the tree that God told her not to eat of. And she also gave some of this uh, to her husband, who was also with her, and he ate it also. So they both disobeyed God, eating from the tree of good and evil. So we read in Genesis 3, 7, it says that the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed together fig leaves and made coverings for themselves. So evidently, before this time, they didn't realize they were naked. Now, I've heard some people say they had a, a glow about them that covered their nakedness. But I, I can't really find that in the Bible, but I think it's probably true. So they, they had some fig leaves to cover their nakedness. And so what happened after that? Well, they heard a voice of the Lord God. Now, the Lord God, that's Jesus. So they heard the voice of Jesus walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. So they, in the past days, probably past many years, Jesus would visit with them and he probably would teach them and tell them things. And they felt they were at ease with, with Jesus the way they were. But on this particular day, after they ate from that tree that he, he told them not to eat of, they were naked. They realized they were naked. And so they hid themselves from God. And so the Lord God called out to Adam and Eve, probably, and said to them, Where art thou? Where art thou? Well, did God really not know where they were? I don't think so. But he did call out, Where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. That's in Genesis 3, 8 and 10. So we find here now that Adam and Eve, they realized their nakedness. And for some reason, they tied that to being afraid of Jesus. But what really happened here? What really happened is they disobeyed Jesus' command not to eat of the tree. So Jesus spoke with Adam and Eve, I believe, and explained to them the seriousness of their act. The seriousness of their act. And Jesus told them that based on breaking uh, God's commandment by eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that they would have to die this very day. Now he had told them that in the past, but I think he reiterated to them the seriousness of their, their, their uh, breaking God's commandment that day. But Jesus continued, I believe, continued telling them that God the Father had anticipated the sad event and had made provisions from their salvation. Now, in prior videos, I've shown you that the plan of salvation was put together by God the Father before anything was created by Jesus. It was put together from the foundation of the earth. So Jesus continued to talk with Adam and Eve, telling them that at a future date, that he, that is Jesus, would voluntarily give up his life to pay the penalty for their sins and for mankind's sins in general. He also explained to them that they must personally sacrifice an innocent lamb for their sins and he told them that the lamb represented himself and pointed to the future sacrifice that Jesus would make for mankind. 
So we also learn that Jesus instructed Adam and Eve to teach their children, starting with their future Cain and Abel, on how they, they their parents had disobeyed, disobeyed God and sinned. And then Jesus instructed them that they must sacrifice an innocent lamb to obtain forgiveness. So even their children, when they grew up and had their own families, they should have an altar and sacrifice an animal for the forgiveness of their sins. So then Jesus went and made something for Adam and Eve's nakedness. So after he told them that they would have to die, he told them that a lamb would have to be sacrificed for their sins. So Adam and Eve, we read in Genesis 3.21, we read that the Lord God, Jesus, made clothing from animal skins for Adam and Eve to cover their nakedness with his righteousness. So imagine that. They had never seen death in the Garden of Eden. And here, because of their sin, that innocent lamb had to die to cover their righteousness with his uh, skin, his clothing. We read again also in Revelation 13.8. This is an important thing. It says that the book of life that belongs to the lamb, that's Jesus, and who was slain before the world was made, so this plan of redemption for Adam and Eve and for mankind was put together before Jesus made you and me and anyone, before he made the stars and the sun and the moon, before any of that was made, Jesus put, uh, had a plan that he was going to be sacrificed for our sins. Jesus then, in supplying clothing to Adam and Eve from the innocent lamb, was the first example in the Bible where an animal was killed that was sacrificed to atone for man's sins. Okay, so now let's look at Cain and Abel. Now I mentioned Cain and Abel, that they were uh, firstborn two sons, and Cain, the older brother, he was the firstborn. And these dates I just have here as a rough reference. Uh, Cain was probably alive uh, from 3900 to 3200. Don't forget, in the in BC, before Christ, you count down to zero. So this is why it looks a little strange. Of course, Abel, his younger brother, was some years younger than uh, his older brother. It doesn't really say, I can't find it anyway, it doesn't really say in the Bible how old he was. But it says here in Genesis 4, when they, that's Cain and Abel, grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. And of course, they built their altars based on what they were familiar with and uh, we read here in Genesis 2, verses 5, when it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. And Abel also brought a gift, the best portion of the firstborn lambs from his flock. And the Lord accepted Abel's gift, but he did not accept Cain's gift. Now, why is that? It is because Abel followed Jesus' instructions in saying that you must sacrifice an innocent lamb, whereas Cain sacrificed the efforts of his labor, his crops. So there was no shedding of blood in Cain's sacrifice, whereas in Abel's sacrifice there was shedding of blood and a poor innocent lamb was killed. Now let's turn over here to, Mo to uh, Noah. Now, Noah preached uh, for 120 years, I guess, that there would be a flood. And it says here in Genesis 8, 20 and 21, And Noah built an altar to the Lord, and there he sacrificed burnt offerings 
uh, of the animals and birds that had been approved for this purpose. And the Lord was pleased with the sacrifice. So even Noah, when his ark landed on land, the first thing he did was to build an altar to sacrifice animals to, for their forgiveness of their sins. Now we're going to turn to Abraham, Father Abraham. Now Abraham, we read a very poignant and touching story in, about Abraham and Isaac and the burnt offering. And that's a wonderful story to, to, to study. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried fire and the knife. And as the two of them walked together, Isaac turned and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham said, we have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Where is the sheep? So the boy recognized that everything was there except for the most important thing was the, the sheep for the burnt offering. And so what did Isaac say? He said, God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. And which he did. There was a, a lamb uh, stuck in the thicket, and that's what Abraham sacrificed at that altar. But the point here I want to mention or point out is that Isaac still built an altar to sacrifice to God. So, after 2,000 years after Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, we find that Abraham is still following Jesus' instructions and in sacrificing an innocent lamb to God for the forgiveness of sins. Now we're going to turn to the Jewish nation that was uh, captive, made captive. And the Jewish nation spent about 430 years in captivity and slavery in Egypt. And during that time, they kind of lost track of their Jewish roots and their heritage. And they did not conduct any blood sacrifices for atonement of their sins. Now, I'm sure originally they wanted to, but the Egyptians wouldn't, wouldn't let them. And over the 430 years, which is a very long time, think about it. That's a long time to remember these things. So their blood sacrifices that God had instructed them to do, to perform, they forgot about them. So we read in Exodus here, 7 verses 14, says, Then the Lord Jesus said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He's a stubborn Pharaoh. So go to the Pharaoh and tell him that the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. So war, the Lord had a message for Pharaoh that Moses should deliver. So in Deuteronomy, we see that the Lord Jesus brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and powerful arm, with overwhelming terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. So Jesus did deliver the Israelites from the Pharaoh from Egypt. So while traveling in the desert, we, we find that the Lord Jesus said to Moses, have the people build me a holy sanctuary so that I can live among them. So the Lord gave Moses detailed instructions how to build this tabernacle. And we're going to get into that in our very next video. We're going to go through this whole tabernacle and show you what the various pieces are meant to be, uh, represent, etc. So he, the Lord Jesus said, to Moses, you must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. That's in Exodus 25, verses 8 and 9. So that's what Moses did. And like I just mentioned, we will be looking at that in great detail in our next video. So let's jump ahead now to Herod's temple. Now Herod's temple was much more uh, beautiful in a way larger, more detailed temple than the temple in the desert.
So in Matthew 21, we read uh, that Jesus entered Herod's temple. And what did he do? He began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. So he went in there and he knocked down the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. And Jesus said to them, The scriptures declare my temple it will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Wow. So some of the disciples began to talk about this majestic stonework. That's Herod's temple. It must have been really something. And then the memorial decorations on the walls. We read that in Luke 21. But Jesus said something to them that they hardly believed. But Jesus said, the time is coming, and, and actually it was very soon, it was AD 70, when all these things that you're looking at at Herod's temple will be completely demolished, and not one stone will be left on top of another. And that's what happened. The siege of Jerusalem in the year 70 AD was the decisive event where the Roman army captured the city of Jerusalem and destroyed both the city and the temple. And you know, the temple has never been rebuilt, and this ended the Jewish nations having animal sacrifices. To this very day, there's no more sacrifices that are uh, performed in Jerusalem or, or in, in Israel. So we read in the Hebrews, it says, for Christ did not enter into a holy place, that's the temple on earth, with human hands, which were only a copy of the true one in heaven. But Jesus appears now before God, the Father, on our behalf, and did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again, like the high priest on earth, year after year. But now, what does it say here? But now, once for all time, Jesus has appeared at the end of the age. At the end of the age. That's, that was on Resurrection Sunday in AD 30 to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. So in AD 30, Jesus told Mary when, he was, when he, she met him in where, where he was buried outside of his tomb, he told her, do not touch me. I have not yet ascended to my Father in heaven. So in AD 30, he ascended to his Father in heaven, who at that point accepted his sacrifice for mankind. So there's no necessity, there's no value in sacrificing animals on earth anymore. That has been eclipsed by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Well, the old system, the animal sacrifices, was only a shadow or a dim preview of the good things to come with Jesus' sacrifice. That's what it says in the New Testament in Hebrews. Well, we've taken a look at a number of things here today all the way from Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, Noah, Abraham, the tabernacle in the desert, Herod's temple, Jesus' sacrifice, and of course the destruction in AD 70 of Herod's temple. So we've kind of gone through this very quickly. So I hope you've discovered that the sacrificial system that was initiated in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned continued until Jesus' sacrifice in AD 30. And we will continue in, uh, looking at the details of some of this in our next video when we look at the tabernacle in the desert. So don't miss that. That's coming up very soon. Well, thanks for taking time to watch this video. And if you were blessed by it, and I hope you were, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. And if you have a question or you like this video, please leave a comment. That will allow more people to see the video. YouTube, if you're watching it on YouTube, will rank it higher and more people will be able to see it. Well, in our next video, like I've said, we will look at the sanctuary in the desert. 
So God bless and thanks for taking time to watch this today.